Uh, Batavia Park District Board meeting, regular board meeting for May 15th, 2018. It is 7.02. Uh, please call the roll. Riley. Here. Dorsey. Here. Gray. Here. Callahan absent. Tillman. Here. We have a quorum. Uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Any items to be changed or removed from the agenda? Uh, yes, I'd like to strike personnel from executive session. All right, that's 16B. We'll strike that mm -hmm. and pick that up next month. Mm -hmm. okay. Perfect. Um, all right, I, uh, item number five. I uh, entertain a motion to establish the consent, consent agenda, which consists of the approval of the minutes for regular board meeting of April 17th, the executive session April 17th, Paid expenditures, expense approval report, investment summary, income statement, purchases, and annual treasurer's report. So, second. Or so no. moved. <laughs> second. <laughs> I'm so used to doing second. <laughs> Motion by Gray, second by Dorsey. Please call the roll. Gray? Aye. Dorsey? Aye. Riley? Aye. Kelvin absent. Tillman? Aye. Motion carries. I now entertain a motion to. Uh, approve the consent agenda as established. So moved. Second. Motion by Gray, second by Dorsey. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Uh, item number six, matters from the public. All of those people in the horde, please come forward. <laughs> See, no one. Nobody. Nobody. Uh, yeah. Item number seven, matters from the commissioners. Anybody have anything to no. talk about? Excited to see big ones, the big giant boxes arriving, and there's we can see They're a few structures. Some good progress. Yeah, yeah. We're excited. For one, I understand it's huge. It is huge. You just need uh, Mother Nature to, <laughs> to cooperate a little. Yeah, that's your person. Two seats. To I know. Right. I keep. Uh, <laughs> I keep trying to pay him. And yeah, he's got to. You know. We're excited, but Jim, I'm amazed at how many people I say, oh, we'll go down the path to the park behind Rotolo, Prairie Pet Park. Oh, there's a park there. Oh. So, see, people yeah, good. don't live on Thank the east you. side, yeah. <laughs> go visit it. <laughs> Item number eight, announcements. We have a lot of wonderful events coming up. Um, summer is just around the corner, so we've got some wonderful announcements for you guys today. Uh, so we want you to gear up for summer fun with the Batavia Park District. Both Hall Quarry Beach and po Paddle Boats on the Fox River are opening on Saturday, May 26th. Uh, definitely check out the Summer Fun Guide. Uh, there's a special buy one, get one free admission to the quarry and a discount coupon for the paddle boats in there. So definitely check it out. And don't forget to join us at the quarry on Monday, June 18th for Wacky Water Olympics from 1230 to 4 p.m. You can also visit bataviaparks.org for more details, but you can also get a digital copy of those coupons. And also the Park District is teaming up with the Parks Foundation to host a special parks cleanup day uh, down at the Riverwalk on Saturday, June 2nd from 8 a.m. to noon. Uh, if you're interested in helping out, you can RSVP to me, uh, Katie Drum, uh, at katied at bataviaparks.org by May 26th. And also mark your calendars for the upcoming 10th annual Super Savvy Senior Expo on Wednesday, June 6th from 9 a.m. to noon at the Eastside Community Center. Uh, the expo is presented by the Physical Therapy Advantage um, in cooperation with Batavia Senior Citizens Club. And we're also celebrating island style this year because it is the 10th anniversary for this healthy, living, active lifestyle event. Um, and this expo is geared towards educating and entertaining ages 50 and up. So be sure to definitely check out all the interactive exhibits um, in areas of health, travel, uh, as well as entertainment and improving daily life. Um, there's also going to be a lot of great chances to win prizes. Uh, for more details, including the list of exhibitors, definitely check out our website. Uh, admission is free and the first 100 visitors are going to get a free tote bag and a gift from the Park District. 
And once again, the Park District is also sponsoring the Batavia Triathlon Splash and, da Splash and Dash uh, this year on Saturday, June 10th, down at the quarry. Uh, this is a fun youth event for ages 7 through 15 that combines running and swimming. Uh, the focus is on part participation rather than competition, um, and it's a great way to expose uh, youth to USA Triathlon and the exciting world of multi-sport. So for more details on that, though, you want to go head over to BataviaTriathlon.org. Um, and also coming up, it's crazy that summer is just around the corner, but the River Rhapsody Concert Series kicks off on Wednesday, June 13th. So be sure to mark your calendar and bring the whole family down to the Riverwalk on select Wednesdays throughout the summer. Uh, the free concerts are held from 7 to 8.30 p.m. And they kick off with Red Woody, a band who features great songs from every de decade, including Journey, The Strokes, ACDC, and much more. Uh, the summer concerts are presented in cooperation with the Batavia Rotary Club, as well as as Golden Seal service experts. Um, and last but not least, I'm getting a lot of breath here, uh, reel in the fun this Father's Day at the Fishing Derby. Uh, you can grab your gear and bring the whole family down to Clark Island Recreation Area from 10 a.m. to noon for a morning of fishing and fun on the Fox River. Uh, there is going to be a limited supply of fishing gear available and prizes as well. Um, admission is free and it's definitely going to be a great time. Uh, and of course, if you have any questions about any of our upcoming events or programs this summer, give us a call at 630-879-5235 or check us out on our website, bataviaparks.org. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Item number nine, staff reports. Any updates we want to I talk about? I would like to uh, start by uh, uh, doing some announcements about uh, our people museum. Mm -hmm. We are, as Katie is so well put, we're heading into that summer season, um, at which point in time uh, we start to have some extended hours on the weekends. So. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we're open on regular 2 to 4 p.m., but on the weekend, we're open noon to 4 on the Saturdays and Sundays. Now, the uh, Gustafson Research Center is open on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 2 to 4 or by appointment. And applications, folks out there in TV land, applications are available for the Windmill City uh, fe uh, Craft, Fest, and Vintage Market. Um, Jennifer puts here, who is here. Uh, tonight, hey, um, you can contact her at Jennifer P. at BataviaParks.org for a copy of that application form. Um, and we're again participating, any idea how many years this has been? Many, many years in the passport uh, program. The Cane DuPage Regional Museum Association Passport to Adventure program. Uh, you can get a little passport at the uh, depot and get a stamp and you can go to the uh, museums in the counties of Kane and DuPage and get the stamps and fill your book up. It's a really fun program and we've seen a lot of kids have a lot of fun with it over the years so please join us at the depot this summer. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you. But we'll save Aaron for last. Yeah, I think we'll skip. <clears throat> well, uh, with, <laughs> without further ado, I'd like to announce that the quarry is full to operating level with the water and we are using the new pumps and filters to circulate oh, and awesome. uh, put the um, chemicals into the pool. So the lifeguards will be using it this Friday for in the water uh, training. Guaranteed that they'll turn into little Smurfs because they'll be blue. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also want to give you a heads up too as you're driving across town. Uh, by the end of the week, you're going to see our awesome event fencing. We're going to be putting it up by the ERO. Uh, so the New Horizons can use that as a, a, a safe play zone while we're working on uh, the house and the property over at the Eastside Center. So in case you see that, you're like, what's going on? Now you know. That's all I got. You know, I should point out that um, you had a detailed thing of all the stuff that had to go on for the quarry, but it's not just the parks, the recreation, the marketing, everybody. It's a huge effort to get the... Um, uh, quarry uh, up and running every year and you know kudos to everybody you know not just you know you had a detailed write-up but if you if you folks saw this it's a good 10 paragraphs worth of stuff <laughs> dedicated to <laughs> just getting the quarry up and running so you know every GTS. year that was Eric's journal thank you. yes <laughs> it was, yeah well thank you for allowing me to vent it made me feel better yeah good I'm glad <laughs> thank you and that's a really good transition with Brittany, just hiring all the staff, training them, getting that kind of organized. Um, on May 3rd, we had a very successful IPRA Park Pursuit event. 
We had over 200 participants, and we had nothing but positive feedback regarding our staff, regarding our parks. Uh, it worked out really well, so thank you everybody that was involved. Uh, a very positive note to Lori McDonald, which is in charge of our New Horizons Preschool. She was recently awarded a $500 grant from the Batavia Mothers Club Foundation, so we're very excited, very proud of her. That's gonna go into new equipment at the New Horizons Preschool. So with all the updates, it should be uh, very helpful. We got the C Super Senior Expo coming up, which Robin's working on that. We just had our summer sports camp orientation. So we're really excited to get that going. We had a chance to meet all of the coaches. With me, me my first time, it was nice to meet everybody, see them, get to know them. And we're super excited about that. So that's really what we have going on in the rec world. <laughs> no. Sorry. Hi, everybody. Um, I just wanted to give you a quick update to um, some things that were in your board packet. Um, the annual report and community survey results are finally done and published and printed. Um, we expected them to be mailed to residents sometime next week, but actually it turns out they're going to be in probably Thursday or Friday this week. So you guys will be um, seeing those in your mailbox soon, so definitely check it out. There's some really great information in there um, all about our community survey that we did last fall. So definitely check that out. Um, and also, uh, you probably all heard, but we did have to reschedule our touch a truck. Uh, so that is taking place this Friday uh, from 10 to noon at the Lodge at Laurelwood. Uh, and it's actually going to be a gorgeous day, so we're really excited about that. Um, and we've got some, um, a lot of fun vehicles, and we've got some really fun sponsors, and we're going to have food, so it's going to be a really great day. So definitely looking forward to that this Friday. Um, and then uh, just to share some great information about some of our Batavia youth, uh, we just wrapped up our graphic design mentorship with the high school. We had been mentoring uh, student Josh Lorch uh, since January, and he was designing some graphics for Haunted Quarry. And so those are all finalized. Um, they're included in your board packet, but uh, he did a really excellent job. He's graduating uh, actually here shortly, going off to college, uh, but we are gonna do a, an interview of him to be featured this fall in the King County Chronicle. Um, and uh, shout out to Miriam McKee, she mentored him and she did a really great job. And also we did hire our summer marketing intern um, and her name is Denise Cartina and she's actually from Batavia as well. So uh, we haven't had a Batavia intern in quite some time. So really excited, she actually went through a lot of our programs, uh, volunteered with us, and so uh, really excited to watch her grow in this capacity as well. She's a, a marketing and PR student at ISU and her finishing up her sophomore year, and so she actually starts next Monday. So we're really awesome. excited to have awesome. her this summer. So okay. that's it, that's all I got. Thanks guys. Excellent. Any um, so Eric, I, I just wanted to uh, congratulate you on uh, doing some professional development for uh, staff. On yes weed uh, control, etc. Mm -hmm. So I think that's important that they uh, use it properly to ensure that you could get in trouble. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, yeah, we have to keep logs on everything. The pesticides properly, so uh, congratulations on doing that. And then also uh, first aid training. Yes. Um, so even, those, even though those folks are not going to be in the pool, it's important that they know, you know, what's... Yeah, you never know when it comes in handy. To, uh, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're in touch with the public all the way, you know, or at least observing the public while they're out working. So, uh, mm -hmm. yes, that's really great. Thank you. I'll pass that on. Appreciate that. <clears throat> Any, anybody else? Aaron, did you have a... I do. Uh, I have a, a small presentation. Okay. It's based off of a 112-page document that's right in front of you. Ooh, yeah. So, I think 1 o'clock we should be <laughs> close. <laughs> it should be good. No, but all, all seriousness, uh, this is a wealth of information, and I want to take this time to thank Tom, and Dan from Sickage and the rest of your team at Sickage, you guys are professionals. Uh, really help us a lot with uh, you know getting the audit done, guiding us through the process. Uh, wouldn't be possible without their professionalism. And he'll be up later to talk about his opinion and some of his insights to our financials. But I, I think really this is a chance to celebrate how great we really did last year. So I really just wanted to touch on some high level things to start. Uh, this first slide is taking a look at our general recreation and museum funds and really we're just looking at revenues and expenses and our surpluses and uh, just a point of note uh, makes this a little more impressive is for the purpose of our audit our recreation fund actually has our quarry rolled into it so in 2017 we revenues exceeded expenditures by over eight hundred thousand dollars 
And what I really want to point out with this slide is that over the past three years, we've had surpluses. We've, we've got structural surpluses in these funds, and that's really important. But what's even more important is the degree of accuracy that we achieve when meeting those revenue and expense budgets. And it's been extremely consistent when we look at both our revenue and expense budgets. And in total, we just do a great job of really projecting where we're going to end up. So regardless of you know how much spend we have in one year or another, we're on target, and that's certainly important. Uh, another thing that I want to point out with this is that in the recreation fund alone, $2.2 million uh, uh, was program revenues. And I know this is a stat you guys like to hear. That represents 73% of the total revenues mm -hmm. within the recreation fund. Those same $2.2 million covers 78% of total costs within the recreation fund. What and then on top of that, it was it came in at 98% of budget. What did that come up? What did that, sorry, mm -hmm. which, what did that, what was that in previous years? Sorry, the 73% of? Oh, very consistent. Yeah. Very consistent. Oh, okay. That's it's not trending up or down. Uh, okay. I think it was, uh, I know it was it's going to be right around a 73, 74% average over those three years. Okay. Uh, so we don't see too much move in it. And the recreation fund includes the quarry as well. Yes. Yeah. So uh, next slide shows total expenditures across all our funds. And uh, there's a few key takeaways here. The first one is the orange, which is our capital outlay. Uh, capital outlay is consistent. We're doing a good job planning and forecasting our needs and spending so that we're on top and our assets aren't aging at a, at a faster rate than we can handle in the future. So we're doing a good job keeping up with our capital outlay, uh, keeping it at a consistent level and making sure we're on top of our aging assets. Uh, the gray area represents debt service and the real uh, thing to look at here is from 16 to 17 there was a large drop off in the gray. And that's because at the, uh, as of 1231, 2017, the district no longer has any long-term bonds outstanding. Uh, so we're very proud of that. And what this does is it frees us up with those surpluses I talked about earlier to really uh, help and fund additional capital funding in the future. So it allows us to reallocate and, and plan accordingly, provides for flexibility. And then that big chunk of blue down at the bottom is our operating expenses. And I really am proud of how well controlled those operating expenses came in. That's 1.1% growth from 16 to 17. That's really good considering we were expecting 2.1% inflation. Uh, and then that's how much our property tax levy grew was 2.1%. So then again, revenues outpacing expenditures, very positive there. Uh, one of the things that I wanna point out within our operating expenses is our salary expenses. Uh, it's one of our largest lines. Total salary expenses equaled $2.8 million in uh, 2017, and that was identical, almost identical, to total salary expenses in 2016. So again, controlling costs, uh, doing very good with that regard. Let's see. In total, this is another cool one, in 2017 we had $7.15 million of expenditures. On this graph, that is the lowest amount of expenditures we've had in, since 2009. So, this it's next like, one. I'm happy to hear these things. <laughs> <laughs> I know the auditor can no, certainly. No, I love it. And yeah. if you go back, I, I, yeah, that's <clears throat> time for your benefit. That I wanted to confirm that spike in 2012. We actually did a major. That was when we did the quarry, I believe. Mm -hmm. Right. 11 to 12. Yeah. 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 So there's that. There's a major. Mm -hmm. liner and all that we did to improve the quarry that's that spike other than that we're fairly consistent and flat yeah with the debt service as well and then even that now is trending down so it frees up space to do other cool exciting things this is our general fund unassigned fund balance and uh, you can see it just growing from 2009 to 2017 but I, what I really want to point out is in the past two years our unassigned fund balance grew by 75% from 5.3 months of reserves on hand to 9.3 months of reserves on hand. Our fund balance policy states that we need to keep three to 12 months of reserves on hand to meet our operating expenditures. And this is a very important indicator of how shock resistant uh, the district is. And we're just, these past two years, you can see it's starting to go exponential on us. It's, it's, it's great. So we're really doing well there. 
And this last one is net position. Net position is where we look at where we are like a business entity. We're looking at all our assets. We're looking at all our liabilities, all our capital. And again, you're seeing growth. And this is really, really positive. All three components of the district's net position have improved from 16 to 17. And the largest component in blue is our investment in capital assets. Uh, again, this shows our cap, you know, sort of shows how we uh, are planning our capital to make sure that we're growing our asset base at, uh, at a pace that exceeds our depreciation of that asset base. It's also indicative of the amount of debt we have on our books. Uh, so it's really, really positive to see that trend moving up and uh, to continue to move up. Um, the orange component represents restricted uh, net assets. This portion more than doubled from 16 to 17 due to capital contributions that we're familiar with uh, in, in the year. And certainly we look forward to using those resources for their intended purposes. And then finally, the gray portion is our unrestricted uh, net position and that increased to $4.1 million as a result of surpluses generated as I previously discussed. In total, our net position increased by 9% from 16 to 17 to, or by $2.8 million. So really, really positive year, a lot of good things going on. And then you wanna look at the trend over time. Our net position from 2009, the recession, to 2017 has increased by 66% from $21 million to $35 million. And I could not be happier with how things came out in 2017, the work that's been put into making this come out, uh, hitting a financial goal, like any goal or target, it's, it's really important that you have a planning element to it, but it's even more important that you have an execution element to it. Uh, your, your direction at the board through the budget process Staff's uh, diligence uh, makes my job easy, really, really executing on these budgets. And uh, we can see it uh, in the trend and also in, in our 17 performance. <coughs> so I think we've got a lot of uh, things to be proud of here. And uh, thank you for your time. If you go back to the first screen, the budget accuracy screen, mm -hmm. I, I just, I gotta give kudos to you and your staff because, and all the staff, because I know they're getting emails from you on a regular basis. For the, <laughs> Because this is all about data mining. Yeah. You know, you've been yeah. in these numbers, you know, up, down, and sideways, and this is how the budget stays accurate. And it just makes it that much easier for everybody to run um, the district mm -hmm. if everybody's budgets kind of stay in line. The last thing you want is some spikes and so forth. And because of the data mining that you and your staff are doing, the spikes yeah. are gone. We don't really necessarily have that. You know, and there's going to be the one-offs. Everybody understands that. Yeah. But for the most part, you know, when you're 97, 98 percent yeah. budget accuracy, that's that's fantastic. Thank so, you. Yeah. Thank you. And I, I think it's really important to know that if you drill down into that book, you're going to see a lot of lines that go over, mm -hmm. and you're going to see a lot of lines that go under. But that's the flexibility that's allowed to us to really respond to what our customers are looking for and to uh, you know hit our things. But when we look at these results we know we're hitting our targets. But if your numbers trended in the 60s and 70s percentage, you wouldn't be able to accommodate those spikes and valleys no, to no. people. Yeah, it it, wouldn't, it would just wouldn't happen because it would Your destroy. budget document would not right. be meaningful at that so, point. Yeah. Yeah. And Aaron does put together a monthly report for staff so that kind of analyzes the summary overall for the month. Oh, yeah. you know, so well, I know. I see the faces. I know they're getting emails yeah. from you <laughs> on a regular basis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very, very proud. They make my job easy. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And Aaron's doing, you're doing a great job. I agree. Good job, Aaron. Yeah. 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 Good job. Yeah, I just want to say, you know, again, congratulations. I, I just don't think it, that it can be said enough. Um, as a commissioner, uh, it makes it makes me sleep well at night knowing that we're in such a great financial position. And I know that when we go through the budgeting process, that each department takes a lot of effort to go through to cut costs and look at their expenditures and what they're spending money on. Allison, I know you're always looking at that stuff too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this collective effort with these three, four slides, I know you've done a lot of work and then you look at this and you know, okay, I don't know if you're getting a warm and fuzzy like I am, but <laughs> it really is appreciated all Thank the time you. and effort, the monthly reports, the mm -hmm. time you're looking at mm -hmm. stuff, observing and make sure we don't overexpend or get carried away with our emotions to buy a bunch of stuff or whatever. Um, and it's just uh, really good because there's a lot of park districts, municipalities that 
They're in the paper all the time, getting themselves into trouble doing yeah. some, mm -hmm. you know, not wise things. And uh, I think we have great, great discipline. And thanks, you know, for overseeing everything. And thank you. I love the charts; a lot easier to remember. Oh yeah, and observed <laughs> easier to read. Years ago. I can handle two colors, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> and Aaron's a spreadsheet wizard, so if you want spreadsheets, no. by all means. No, these, these with, that's the little, perfect. with these three <laughs> colors, is just colors. that's what we need. That's what you need. Right. Right. We'll keep Save the rest for the big, for the yeah. big book. You know. yeah. well, thank, thank you. Stuff. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll let them yes. Anybody have uh, anything else on, on the staff reports? Um, item number 10, Executive Director's Report. All right. <laughs> Sorry, Shelby. Lights on, lights off. That's right. Gonna adjust our Do a little tap dance. She's got to pull yeah. it up here. Yeah, I'll dial it in now. Sorry. All right, we're just going to switch gears here before we get to the right report. There we are. That didn't That's just much, right? Thank you. All right, moving right into it. On to that next slide. On that next slide, we Why are not doing headed it? towards that next slide. <laughs> Hold on to your seat. Treat it like a spreadsheet. He's really good at spreadsheets. He's 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 good at you know, repeating the same task over and over and like expecting a different way. result is the true definition of insanity. Yeah. So. That's true. And right. typically we get there that. We where we go. There we go. Typically we get that. All right, moving right in. And I promise I will make this uh, lickety slip because I do know we have some presenters today. <laughs> but um, I'm pleased to present to you uh, with Jim Eby and the preschool teachers and Lori McDonald and myself have been working on with Upland Design. And this is the site plan for the New Horizons Preschool uh, Playground. So here you see, um, actually I might play Vanna here. You need to. Um, here you'll see, this is to the, the west of the building, on the west side of the east side community center. And so this is actually a corn place surface here, where you see the little pond with the fish and the worm. <laughs> That's gonna be, uh, it's ADA compliant. Uh, so strollers, wheelchairs, we'll be able to just glide right on, so it's just like Angstrom Park. Um, and here we've got a slide, we've got the hill slide, which you'll see up here. Mm. So kids can enter if they want to enter the playground that way, that's one way for them to do it. We do have um, a cozy dome. Uh, we have some poured rubber turtles <laughs> that kids can play on top of. Mm. Uh, we do have uh, a trike track made out of concrete, so they can ride their tracks, trikes around the track. Oh, trikes, say that. Say that, yeah. Aye, aye, aye. Um, we do have a storage shed on site, and here's a little depiction of what that looks like. So we didn't want to just have your stereotypical shed, especially if we're going with a theme. So we uh, made it very cozy. We have our parks department build some shelving units in there just so we can maximize storage since right now the, the New Horizons Preschool is utilizing both garages from the structures that are gonna to be torn down. So they are gonna to need to uh, be more efficient with space. So, but luckily we just found out today that we received a $500 grant from the Mother's Club. So uh, Lori McDonald and the New Horizons Preschool teachers are planning on purchasing new equipment with that $500. So we can you know, look at it, find out what's broken, and replace that. Um, there are going to be some musical instruments as a, a piece of this, um, as well as a play structure that uh, kids will be able to climb in and around and over. Uh, and then there will be some really neat flower talk tubes. They're play panels. So kids can talk into the flowers mm. and play with them, move them around a little bit. Um, and next. So this is actually where the, the playground um, is going to be located. So there's going to be a lot of regrading that's going to be done, so that way the playground won't be at a tilt. Um, and uh, so there's going to be a lot of the, the you'll see a lot of the topsoil and that uh, really just leveling out. Uh, but I wanted you to get a good feel for exactly where. Will it's the going sidewalk to be. stay where it is, or does that have? To, I mean, is it from the sidewalk up, or does it go all the way out to the? It, from the sidewalk, there will be a 
to, there'll be a another fence. next a thing. There's a, there's okay. a wall, right. I will a retaining wall that goes in, and then then okay. we're to the yeah. Okay. So the next slide. Oh, no. Well, okay. Yeah, the next oh, slide. Come in. Zip over here. Um, it'll show. This is where the retaining wall is going to be, and then the sidewalk. Is that Van Buren? Mm -hmm. and along this is Van Buren. the. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then you can see this is the entrance to get into the East Side Center. So really, it's going to create a beautiful brand new entrance. I shouldn't say new entrance, but a marketing for it. Yeah. And this is the look of the fence that's going to go with it. Is that what? Yep. So um, even though it says wrought iron, we're not quite sure it's going to be made of that mm -hmm. because that is a lot more expensive. So it has to be bid out. It could be an alternate in the bid, um, but it's going to be four feet in height, painted black. And then the next slide shows the cool little decor that's going to be actually oh. on the fence. So all of these little uh, nature creatures, um, the butterflies, <coughs> the, the geckos, are all going to be a part of it. So it'll create a lot of intrigue for the eye when you're walking by. And we are going to be really careful to make sure that the dragonfly doesn't have too many pointed edges. Because we may have to trade out some critters for others just to, for safety. Mm -hmm. So, um, but here again, you can see um, exactly what this is going to look like. This is a flower bed here that the preschool may be using for their curriculum for planning purposes here. Um, you know, we're going to make sure that we have access to some water uh, so that way you know, our parks department can make sure that all of the new shrubs and uh, the garden can be watered easily. And then uh, and you can see the trees here. Elsa, can you show, um, okay, so I understand the red is the new fence. Where is the parking, the current parking where you turn in right the Kemp Hall? Where is that? Uh, north of this. Okay, so what is that? That's just the going, the, that's what's the, the white thing? That's, part of the building. <laughs> that's the building. That's, that's the, the oh, part sorry. next to the, the, so the concrete the stairs that are, yeah, yeah, yeah. got it, the juts out. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it, I was, couldn't the tell. The black top actually would start at the, at the very top edge of that picture. That's where the parking mm -hmm. lot is. Got it, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Next. And something that's, that we're really geeked up about, and we usually don't get excited about walls, <laughs> but what we're gonna do is create a faux limestone wall and uh, it's going to be made out of concrete and there's a really neat layering process so it can kind of almost stencil uh, the wall when it's peeled off and it'll be painted to match the exact color of the Batavia limestone that you see around town and um, so even though it's concrete it's like this so that's just limestone. the form they put on there that has the, the rubber the essential rubber liner oh yeah cool so we're really excited about that because it's not just a concrete retaining wall, it's actually a decorative mm -hmm. wall that will match what you see around town. That'd be cool. Next. Cool. And uh, there's a fabric shade structure, mm -hmm. so you see this, mm -hmm. this square here. Um, this is actually the, the shade structure um, over the bulk of the playground. And now you get to see the colors, the coffee brown and the desert sand. And the dimensions are listed there for you as well. But you get a real feel for it. So we are going to be working closely with Eric and his team to find out whether or not they'd like to leave that structure up in the winter season. Because as you can imagine, snow can mount on it. But the, at the angles that it's been created, it was designed for all seasons. So we'll be working closely with the team to <coughs> maybe give it a pilot, <laughs> pilot season. Um, so this whole project, uh, you know, we are full speed ahead. And um, city council has asked that we, or the city staff has asked that we treat this New Horizons uh, playground, which is also going to be a playground for the public as well, um, that we treat this uh, at the same time as we do our parking lot for approvals. So now it's one big project instead of two separate projects. So with the parking lot over at the Eastside Center, uh, we're going before the Planning Commission and the Historic Preservation Commission. Um, within weeks of each other, and then city council for approvals on the playground and approvals for the parking lot, but all is one big project. So um, the Historic Preservation Commission, they're gonna look at things such as color scheme. Does it make sense for that area? Uh, which is funny because we're, used, we're in the playground business, but because it's in the historic district, they can serve as an advisory council for city council. So. Um, 
but we're not really worried about it. Jim and I have been to uh, yeah. meetings where we've received a lot of city support. Um, we've been with them every step of the way, so there aren't any surprises. So just a lot of uh, questions because they're not used to uh, building playgrounds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so awesome. it's a good educational process for us to inform them of next steps. Yes. And here's a, just a, a close look at our storage shed. What you see every day. Now we're oh, going to. Before you go, one more. Uh, the other oh, really have, good thing is that uh, by doing this on the west side of the building, we now are creating a second fully accessible entrance into the building. Currently, that's, you, you got to go up steps mm -hmm. to get in that doorway. Mm -hmm. So as we create this new area, we are able to work it so that the wheelchairs or persons with mobility issues can get up to that door right out of the parking lot. Nice. So Thank you for being It'll that. be very nice. Outside, how do they get through the fence? There's a ramp, I think, from... The ramp, ramp, there was a ramp the, that goes up along right, the wall, the, inside the wall. Okay. Part. So yeah, you, you have ramp, your choice of... Uh, oh, got it. Around. You yep. can do stairs or you can go around. Yeah, right. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah. And we can use special rec money uh, to help fund that. Okay. Too. So now we're switching gears to a different playground. So this is actually uh, the Big Woods Park right here. And so you can see just how tall the structures are starting to get, and that's without the shade structures on top. So, um, but we need Mother Nature uh, to cooperate with us so we can get this done a little bit more quickly. Next. This isn't as attractive of a slide, but a lot of people at home may not know just how much goes into developing uh, a playground once the old playgrounds are moved. Uh, there's a drainage uh, system, which is exactly what this is, uh, that is underneath every single playground. So um, a lot of times those get damaged either during the removal from the former playground or if it's just a good idea to replace them depending on how old they are, the drainage system is. And um, so this has to take place before anything else can lay on top. <laughs> it's been getting to work out this week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so this is Payne Woods Park. Next. All right, uh, you may recognize this face in our audience tonight. <laughs> Our Depot Museum, uh, Jennifer Putzier, uh, the Depot Museum director. She's standing in front of our Victory Garden, and um, we're pretty proud of this. This is really an in-house effort uh, for our Parks Department, working in collaboration with the museum staff. So the, what used to be here was outdated shrubs. Uh, they were old, they were dying, um, and we couldn't really give much life support to them. <laughs> so. So they were removed, and um, as you know, we have an in-house greenhouse, and so Kim Hansen, our superintendent of parks, has been doing a great job harvesting seeds, or harvesting plants from seeds, and um, she was working on vegetable plants all winter, and so sure enough, uh, Jennifer had a day where volunteers came together and started planting all these healthy vegetables, uh, you name it, tomatoes, onions, Radishes, it's there. The bunnies haven't discovered it yet. So I don't know how that's going. They haven't made their way to the river walk yet. <laughs> um, but so far, so good. And it's you know really become quite the uh, eye-catching look when you walk by. And the harvest, what are, we, what are we planning to do with the harvest? Eat it. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a good point. Jennifer, did you want to speak on behalf of what we're planning on doing with the, yeah. once everything's harvested? Um, because it's mostly an educational exhibit. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm offering first dibs to the volunteers who help with this, and anything extra we're hoping to be able to give to the Oh, perfect. Yeah. All right. Thank That's you. That's cool, isn't it? And next. Thanks for worth all the work. Uh, this is a promotion for the Parks Foundation Cleanup Day. Mm -hmm. This will be at the Riverwalk on Saturday, June 2nd from 8 till noon. So I'd like to encourage any board members, if you can, to just let, let me know. And anyone that's watching at home that's interested in helping out on Riverwalk Cleanup Day, you can contact Mrs. Katie Drum at Katie, K-A-T-I-E, D as in drum, at BataviaParks.org. Next. Uh, this is a fun infographic, just to remind everyone that we are promoting our needs assessment results. So we have it on our website, we have it in our annual report, it's in our summer fun guide. Um, we really want to get the word out uh, to the public and thank everyone who participated. 
and we're trying to use every single avenue that we can uh, to let you know what the results are. Next. So innovation is a part of uh, what our recreation team does best, and this is no exception. Uh, in case you're wondering what she's doing, she's actually doing yoga on a paddle board, cool. but she's sitting down. Well, what we're going to be doing this year at the quarry is yoga standing up on paddle boards. Mm -hmm. So um, something completely unique for the area and found only at the Batavia Park District. So kudos to the rec team for really thinking creatively and um, we're going to give it a whirl at the quarry. Wow. Next. Oh, yeah. and, uh, while we're talking about innovation, um, this was the brainchild of our new director of recreation, Steve. Is that him? You know, <laughs> not the poster child for it. But um, we are going to be offering bubble soccer at this year's Windmill City Festival. I love it. So that is going to be like something. team competition kind of thing. Yep, it's a lot of fun. Done it a couple times. So it's hot. since we changed the layout of this year's Windmill City Festival, we're utilizing the horseshoe parking lot to put food vendors. Um, so we're moving out the food vendors uh, into a different spot. So we won't be able to do the food, the fire hose challenge in that spot anymore. So, um, so we've decided to move the fire hose challenge to the chili cook-off special event. So we figure everybody needs to cool off after a spicy chili. So. Um, so Steve came up with bubble soccer to fill that, that space on a mm. Sunday afternoon. Mm. So it'll be a lot of fun and it's going to be free. Nice. <laughs> and we'll have band-aids and ice packs. Ice packs. Yeah. <laughs> Next. Do I have to do this one? Oh, you're not supposed to peek ahead. I'm, I'm oh my oh, gosh. Yeah. And happy birthday to our director of finance. Today? <laughs> I knew what you were up to. Yeah. The one the I, think, I can't say no to you. Oh, the one on the upper right is the perfect <laughs> That's picture. That's a great picture, Aaron. That's a great picture. Yeah. The many facets of Aaron Gold. Yeah. That's but awesome. Happy birthday, Aaron. Happy you put that on whenever you do your heavy budgeting. Is that? Yeah. <laughs> That's what the real thing is. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I should have blurred out the candles on there. <laughs> You're good. You're good. And so that is a wrap. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, really? 33 we got to wow. see? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Aaron, really? Come on. <laughs> yeah. All right. So John, just yeah, so much uh, yeah. So, so um, you know, I think you guys did a great job. I, I'm going to your report on that you submitted. So okay. I, I think uh, you did a great job with this cleanup of the homeless shelters around Woodard uh, baseball field, and so I think that you should maybe um, either write a letter or contact uh, BYB and let them know because there was a discussion about that because oh. before, during, uh, maybe during the time of this. Uh, one of the homeless folks was in the dugout, and the kids found him. So the oh. fact that you know there there was concern about you know what you know, was going to happen. So the fact that this was taken care of and even into the woods, because the conversation you had about <laughs> the tournaments, what if parents or little kids are running around out there in the woods. So this has been solved now. So I think BYB would be great for the park district to say, look, we recognize an issue here. We took care of it, mm -hmm. and you guys don't have to worry. I think that'd go a long way and relations and all that great. excellent will do mm -hmm. anybody else no. um, item number 11a the auditor's presentation fiscal year 2017 um, did you want to introduce or actually I'll let Aaron, Aaron introduce. Okay. Uh, this is Tom Sawicki from Sickett she's our manager on the job uh, I thank them already and I can't thank them enough. They, they're very professional. They come in, uh, they provide great guidance and advice and uh, we always look forward to having them. Uh, one thing that I failed to mention earlier is that this is a public document. We want this to be a public document. It'll be available on our website earlier. But Tom's really going to walk us through uh, what, what they do when they come in here and uh, uh, sort of give you another high level overview of the financial statements. So, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, don't apologize. I don't have any colorful charts or. Right. Like Aaron said, my name is Tom Swicky. I'm the second audit manager, um, and we serve as the auditors for the district for the 12 31 17 fiscal year end. That's the report you're looking at in front of you. Um, I'd like to uh, thank you for being here tonight to present to you and the opportunity for us to serve as 
monitored for the district. Uh, I'm happy to report, and the main thing you probably all want to know is that we have issued an unmodified opinion and a financial statement. The unmodified opinion is what we call a plan opinion, and that's the highest level of assurance we can provide that the financial statements are free from any sort of misstatement. So congratulations um, to everyone here, and to Aaron. Um, I'll go through a little bit of our audit timeline. We began up here back in January with our preliminary field work. We did the bulk of our work in March, and then we issued our report um, as of May 1st. So um, that was uh, part of our uh, audit schedule that we agreed to at the start of the audit, and we were able to meet all those deadlines thanks to um, you know all the work that Aaron put in, being so prepared for us, and getting all the information that we needed. So again, thank you, Aaron, and for your staff for being so so ready for us. Um, in addition to the unmodified opinion that you'll be receiving, we'll be issuing, uh, we'll be uh, submitting the report to GFOA, and we fully expect that you'll be receiving your eighth consecutive um, certificate of achievement and excellence for financial reporting. Um, mm -hmm. So, in advanced, congratulations on that one. <laughs> That's still on still. Uh, jumping into the report itself, uh, I'm ready to page one. It's actually about ten pages into the report. The rest of the report is all the district's information. Uh, these three pages, uh, within here you'll find our actual opinion on the financial statements where we present that we have issued an unmodified opinion on these financial statements. Uh, beyond that, the next section is the management's discussion and analysis, uh, beginning at MBA page one. Uh, if you don't look at anything else in this audit report, I, see, I would encourage you to look to management's discussion and analysis. Uh, it's about 10 pages long, provides really good information, uh, it pinpoints some key financial information, summarizes the information, and does a comparison from this year to the prior year. Not only that, it does provide explanation as to why some of those changes did occur. The rest of the report is just 123117 information, so these 10 pages here are really important to kind of peruse through and um, uh, to kind of kind of need to get an idea of what changed uh, this year. Uh, on page four is the district statement of net position. I'll direct you to the bottom. This is the net position that Aaron was kind of referring to. Uh, the net position for the district was $34.9 million at year end. It's made up of three separate categories. It's net investment and capital assets, restricted net position, and unrestricted net position. Uh, all three of these components increased from the prior year. As Aaron mentioned, the change in net position went up $2.8 million. Um, I'll direct you to, to the restricted for land acquisition down here of $1.6 million. That relates to the donation that you received during the current year that's restricted for the acquisition of land. On the following page is the statement of activities. Again, this shows your increase in acquisition of $2.8 million. And this is what we call the full accrual basis of accounting. So this includes not only your change in fund balance for the fund financial statements, but changes in your long term activities as well as capital assets. Yeah, on pages 9 to 10, this is the statement of revenues, expenditures, and achievements in fund balance uh, for your governmental funds. So each column represents each uh, major fund, and then the last one over there is the aggregate non-major funds. The first two funds, I'll direct you to general and recreation, each increased net, uh, their fund balance this year by $371,000 and $167,000 respectively. And again, the funds here are within your fund balance policy for three to 12 uh, months of In the Capital Projects Fund on page 10, again, I'll direct you to the donation line. There's a $1 million plus uh, uh, revenue this year, and that relates to the donation you received. Ultimately, your total governmental funds uh, fund balance was $6.7 million, and that was an increase of $1.9 million from last year. After that, beginning on page 12, are the notes to the financial statements. It goes into a little more detail on specific areas. Um, I'll turn you to page 21, and note 4, that's the capital asset activity during the year. So 
So as you can see, capital asset at the bottom there, the net change was about a decrease of about $40,000 in capital assets. What makes that up is uh, capital asset additions of $735,000. And if you want to know more about what goes into those additions, I'll direct you back to the MD&A, which will break out specifically what you guys added this year in capital assets. That's offset by some disposals and your depreciation expense. Beginning on page 22, uh, notes five and six is your debt activity during the year. So note five is your short-term debt, and that's your annual rollover bonds. As you see, you started with zero there, and then you had proceeds of $666,000, the payment of the same, and then any balance of zero. Uh, and note six is your long-term debt activity. When you turn the page, you'll have to mention that you're down to no bonded debt any longer. So this shows your last payment occurred during 2017, you're down to zero dollars in bonded debt at the end of the year. So your long-term debt now only consists of your capital leases related to the new copy release this year, uh, the net pension liability uh, with IMRF, and compensated absences. And you'll find that summarized information on page 24. After that, on page 29, note 9, this is the Illinois Municipal Retirement Plan footnote. This lays out some of the information related to the IMRF plan. And if you go to page 32, this will show your changes in the pension liability that we had to report on the year statements. They only changed about $12,000 this year, so not a, significant, not a significant change from the prior year. I'd like to point out that this information is the 1231-16 IMRF information, as the 17 information was not yet available when we performed the audit. Uh, after that, the schedule behind that are just some more detailed information um, of the different funds and some of the non-income funds as well. And I'll direct you to page 56. I won't go into detail on this, but this is the statistical section. Uh, this information kind of goes through uh, some of the overall financial health of the district and some of the financial trends you'll see. Each schedule is 10 years uh, of information, so you kind of see how things have changed over time. That was some of the uh, financial information I wanted to point out. The other item you might have in front of you is a little black binder, and that is our required communications with the board. Just a couple things in here I wanted to point out as well. On uh, page five are our adjusting your election during the year. And I like to note that there's only three of them, which is fantastic. We do a lot of work on big, really deep information. So for us to only find three corrections that we have made is, is fantastic and a testament to the, the work that Mary and the staff does. The other thing I wanted to point out is right behind that is the management letter. This is where we provide um, any sort of deficiency we found in internal controls and our recommendations for improvement. Have you know we had two very minor deficiencies as noted on page eight. And neither of those are the level of material weaknesses or significant deficiencies, which we have to communicate that with you directly. These two are not up to those levels, and that's fantastic and very easy fixes as well. Um, and then right after that are the future accounting pronouncements, which I'm sure you all read through when we're done here too. Can't wait. <laughs> There's a quiz later. <laughs> so that's the information I wanted to kind of run through with you all tonight, and I want to open up to another question by now. Does anybody have any questions? No. <laughs> um, <laughs> Just so folks know, uh, this is up on the website, the entire report, but if they can't have access to the website, they, there's hard copies or no? Is there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, because uh, I know that they have hard copies, we also have it in our electronic form. So just so folks know, they can get a copy of the report if they need it. Um, thank you very much. Um, you know, once again, an awesome collaboration you know kudos to the staff for putting this together and and for your help this is excellent thank you thank you Tom thank you thank you, Tom. Thank you. you're awesome man thank um, you.
Item number 12A, Capital Development Plan Progress Report. Well, i got to tell you, pretty much everybody's talked about all the projects. Right? So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the playgrounds are coming along very well. The, the rain has scooped us up at Payne Woods. The folks are working very hard at uh, trying to get uh, big woods completed to where they can move over. It's, we're supposed to have three or four dry days now, so they they should be able to get back into Payne to begin with uh, again. Um, we talked about the application we're making for the uh, planned development uh, change in our zoning uh, for the East Side Center. That's what all of the planning now is going to happen. Uh, we'll be working through that process with the city. We're still, and they are fully aware that we're trying to make sure we get things underway in August, September kind of time frame. So uh, we're getting a lot of good support and uh, guidance through them. So um, things are really rolling along. And yeah, that's about it. Cool. Good it's job. all the pretty pictures. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. What yeah, do they do with all those boxes the giant playground stuff's in? Um, those it's are actually, uh, they're pretty much wooden crates. Oh, they Not are? a lot of giant, good-sized boxes. They have got kind of rain down, so yeah. they, they're pretty... Have you seen them? It's fascinating. My kids are like, you're trying yeah. to can we play there? I'm yeah, like, no, sure. you can't play on it. Yeah. <laughs> There's like orange fence around it, yeah. The cardboard on the outside of the crate. Oh, inside got the, it. Or they've got the crating and then they put the... Got the, it. Uh, mm. I just the big interesting to see. We're going to tack them all down. Yeah, it's a it's, it's a lot of, the amount of packaging, crate wood that they've mm. that yeah they've come up with. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Cool. Thank you. Uh, 13A new business approval of the Batavia Historical Society's proposal for naming rights pertaining to the Batavia Depot Museum expansion project. Yes. Included in your packet is a memo of support that I've written uh, explaining really what it is that the Historical Society uh, is looking for and how it came to be. Uh, Jim Eby, Jennifer Putzier, and myself have met with Dan Huffler, who's here tonight. Uh, he's a Batavia Historical Society board member. And um, the society has been approached by many people about naming rights and as we know the park board has a naming rights policy mm -hmm. and really it's uh, unique because what we, we would be selling essentially or what the historical society would be selling is a concept right it's a conceptual drawing right now um, so it doesn't actually exist with the expansion but we know that you know we have put capital dollars towards it we know that the society has signed the agreement that says that they're going to raise as much money as they can so they hit the two million dollar mark um, but this really going to authorizes the society to sell uh, naming rights uh, for five different areas that are included in the proposal and actually at this time i'll invite dan who's here tonight uh, to the podium and um, if there's anything else that you'd like to add to that um, one thing I do want to mention from a staff perspective uh, really when it came down to looking at how much to potentially charge someone for naming rights that is completely uh, flexible I mean it, you know we we as a staff had said you know it could be um, what did we say? was it 25 percent of the cost the direct costs uh, that the architects had given us but by all means, if the park board feels that that number is very low ball or that percentage is very low, um, you know the board could say 75% of the direct cost or 50%. But so I just wanted to, to mention that to the the park board tonight that that percentage is negotiable. Dan, uh, <clears throat> as part of our plan, we're in the second year. It's just been about a year now since we began <coughs> the process of raising funds. Um, we're up over, we're right now at about 750000 that has been allocated from our resources and what we raised. The second year was always uh, looked at uh, as an opportunity to begin to do exactly what we're presenting tonight. We first needed to get the word out, to publicize why it's important for the community of Batavia to support this expansion project. And uh, we believe that we've done that. We also believe that um, going forward, 
we needed a, another um, piece of our, in the quiver, another arrow in the quiver so that we could go out. We have been approached by individuals in the community that may or may not, just depends on our negotiations with individuals or corporations looking at potentially naming something. So we contacted Allison and staff uh, in March to begin that part of the process. Uh, we met a couple of different times with Jennifer, uh, her expertise uh, as well, and uh, came up with the formula that you see before you tonight and what we would potentially go forward with as a starting point to begin any kind of negotiations. And um, we focused at this point entirely as based on part of the recommendation of the staff on the new addition, though uh, there are two hallways. One in the upper hallway that would go into the existing depot is what we're calling the upper gallery, and then the lower gallery, which will get be reworked. Uh, one of the conversations that we've had has been uh, regarding the furnace display, which is on a wall just outside the Gustafson Research Center. The, the Hanson family, the Furnace Foundation, the company has been a staple in Batavia. Uh, they have always been very generous in their support. We've had discussion about moving that to a more prominent, one of these other locations could fit that exactly in terms of what they would like to see as well. Uh, we've had a discussion with somebody outside of our community whose uh, relations um, was prominent in Batavia City Council and politics. They live out of state now and they've approached us as some sort of legacy opportunity as well. But that really has not yielded any anything yet. They were looking for, and people are looking for, okay, if you want to name something, how much is it going to cost me? What is it worth? What do I get out of it? What's the value? We have to be able to present that to the individuals, corporations, businesses that we're speaking to. And now we have a footprint to start that process. There are other places that we can go, as it mentions, we certainly could get maybe one of the major railroads to be our caboose sponsor or local banks maybe to sponsor our coffin <laughs> bank. Who knows, the possibilities are endless, but we appreciate the support that we got from the staff, their direction. And uh, just a, a note, uh, the next time I get invited to a meeting, not on the audit. <laughs> <laughs> the agenda's online. You're a sport. You could read it. You're a good sport. <laughs> I've sat through, I've been on the city council and worked with school boards in my career for 38 years. Uh, boy, those were long. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're not trying to say that the audit process is long and drawn out. That's, I find it exhilarating. <laughs> but I do have a couple of questions um, on, the, on the naming um, right. Um, is your proposal that the names, the naming rights are permanent or are they structured in a way that for a certain cost it's this longevity for having the naming rights and then maybe a maintenance afterwards or at this cost it's always your name is going to be there for forever? That would have to be a discussion with the director, uh, with the board of directors, uh, with our board of directors. Uh, my understanding is, uh, having done this only one other time, contracts are drawn. Uh, sometimes there can be a, a, a time limit based on it, or it can be permanent. Uh, I think that would be a process of negotiating okay. uh, the years and, and, and what location. Uh, so your yeah, your proposal yeah, isn't isn't fixed one way or the other. It's just right. as as the naming rights come to us, we discuss those in individual terms. And, and I think that's in keeping with the board of directors. Yeah, that's fine. I just policy. wanted to make that clear. And I think uh, if you want something that's kind of in perpetuity, then maybe the price is more. Correct. It's a different price. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know how many White Sox we have, fans we have in the room, but I'm sure that Comiskey Stadium, mm -hmm. that, that name changing got pretty old after a while. Mm -hmm. We're happy to do that, by the way. <laughs> 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 I bet. Is there That's any other questions? What's the vetting process for 
kind of courting people that are going to be paying money to so say somebody decides they want to pay 50 percent for the elevator which would be a hundred thousand dollars i mean we'd have to make sure that those people you know for me i wouldn't want guaranteed rate elevator mm -hmm. a good example something yeah. that i can think of i mean naming rights i think it's a good way to raise money but i think that we have to vet each person and kind of like go through and figure out you know what kind of person is this what do they stand for make sure we don't have any you know black and spots on that's it. that's a perfect perfect point excellent example and actually uh, per our board policy the society would actually have to come back to the park board to request permission for that particular sponsor that particular name um, so the board would actually have the final say yeah there is a the policy is included in here and I, mm -hmm. I actually remember when we redrafted mm -hmm. some of this and so uh, this does just for the uh, point that this does fit into uh, at least one maybe even two of the five different types of naming criteria that we have in the policy mm -hmm. um, so it is it's right you know it's right there but it still states that any naming still mm -hmm. comes back to the board for approval oh. and then there's a presentation process that goes along with that and if we have any questions of vetting we can we can kind of do that at that point mm -hmm. is, 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 is any um, research been done on any other historical buildings that maybe have, have uh, wanted a sponsorship and you know, see what the ratio that they use you know, there has to be some other buildings someplace that some park district has you know trying to do a similar thing and what was uh, successful as far as you know whatever the percentage was or a library or yeah another municipal I mean, I mean, it's a good facility. idea it's sure you know especially with the way the economics are in the last 10 years it's become kind of a trend and I'm sure there's a formula that works and doesn't work. And from what we've gathered, it really is all across the board. It depends on if you want to, uh, you know, have a 10-year agreement or commitment, um, or what the direct costs were. Um, so, you know, well, I'm when, that if, if, if if someone says, okay, I want to sponsor something, or, and then they, um, you know, say, okay, well, here here's the price and here's the justification. You know what we saw in California when one of these happened and it was this percentage that seemed to work and this is what people get you know I don't want to oversell us I don't want to under under you know give things away either mm -hmm. I, I would ask yeah uh, Jennifer and I could probably look at things her, her uh, world uh, of the historic society directors historic museum directors I know there's a statewide association she could probably reach out to find an answer to your question and report back to the director and back to the commissioners. Uh, that might be well, a possible, yeah. possible. I don't want to throw in more work at Jen. <laughs> but his research is good, though, if she could, to get some facts. Yeah, and I also would say we are in a slightly unique situation with historic museums where we're actually building new stuff mm -hmm. rather than reading the older stuff that already exists. Mm -hmm. so, um, sorry. That's okay. Over seats over here. Um, so that's that's actually an interesting opportunity as well. Is something a different 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 take on it. So that's why we kind of based it off of square footage costs. Yeah. Okay. yeah, no, we can definitely. Well, I, yeah. I mean, I'm just trying. You know, if you have some some precedent someplace, mm -hmm. whether it's in South Carolina or the large <laughs> historical buildings. I mean, someone has done this, and we're not the first ones. Right. So, you know, there has to be some sort of, at least you can base it, even if it's not an apples to apples, yeah. some sort of criteria that was successful versus, mm -hmm. you know, versus not. You know, yeah. and then they should have something to go with when someone offers, and they, because they want to see if they're getting a good value. You know, in their right. mind, it might be an emotional thing, but sometimes it comes down to a rational, you know, mm -hmm. rational decision also when they're showing out money. Right. Or if it's in someone's will. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, I think, wasn't it the Kane County Forest Preserve with Northwest Medicine Field? And now they're kind of expanding that, so it might help reaching out to them, figuring mm -hmm. out, you know, how they came up, what they did, and what their contract looks like. Uh, the dynamics of uh, major league. Well, and minor league, yeah. My, well, actually, it's the Arizona Diamondbacks, <laughs> um, and they rent 
the King County facility is my understanding at this particular point. How they name those rights, there's, there's a little bit different process. I have a good friend who's an executive up <coughs> with the King County Cougars. And, you know, I know their current agreement is for five years, uh, and, and they changed it. Uh, the, exactly to your point earlier with the vetting process, what Northwestern Medicine wants out of the naming rights on that field is different than what we would want. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, for sure. Naming. I mean, theirs is a, more of a marketing mm -hmm. effort. Ours is more of a legacy and an honor to people who've lived and grown up in Batavia and support Batavia. So the, there's a little bit of a different dynamic. I understand what you're saying. Well, for me, you brought up corporations and right. institutions which means that you're opening the door to something like that. Mm -hmm. right. Whereas like if you're talking legacy, then you're looking for specific people that have the money to spend to get these things done. So if you're gonna go that route, then putting somebody's name on it is completely different. But if you're talking about bringing corporations in and stuff like that, for me, it's a little bit different. So although they both seem like, you know, potential avenues to raise money, they're completely different to me as mm -hmm. far as like how they would be treated. So sure. that's why I asked about vetting processes and gave an example of Northwest Medicine. Right. We're, and marketing is bringing? marketing is Tom's background, so <laughs> he, he studies it well. <laughs> one of them, I mean. Or one of many. Mm -hmm. Well, the, as far as like an institution, if you, a company is going to use it for a marketing effort, unless it's like something like Aldi, who's been here for a long time, or like you've talked about, was it the Hansons? Mm -hmm. Hanson furnace. Yeah, that would be something where a legacy would come in. Those right. are just, you know. My son who went to the Naval Academy, he, uh, the first meeting that we had with the incoming uh, group of midshipmen was in the Bob Hope <laughs> Center mm -hmm. on the Naval Academy mm -hmm. campus, and the whole thing was named after Bob Hope because of his years. But the majority of the money that was given to the government to build that building was from Mr. Hope himself and other friends of Mr. Hope. You know, I, I think the Presidential Library is a really a great example of what we're talking about. When you go into, for example, the Reagan Library. The very first thing you see is the wall of major donors and the um, denominations that they give. Yeah. We're, we and the love, Botanic Gardens is another yeah, example. Mm -hmm. The Chicago Botanic Gardens. a situation Garden. like that. You know? mm -hmm. I think that's Though a good idea. We haven't planned our wall yet our, you know, for the people who've made. You know, we've got a list, and it is growing of individuals and other people who have made contributions to the museum. Uh, Batavia Women's Club, we had a very successful St. Patrick's Day event. They qualified to have their names listed on the permanent display as some as an organization that provided us with Batavia Rotary is giving fifteen thousand over three years. So we're continuing to to build bridges within the community uh, and to reach out. But I, I absolutely agree with you uh, completely. And again, we'll work with the director and staff every step of the way. Yeah. I think it's transparency. Yeah, I think it's a great way to reach out to the community, and I think it's also a great way to raise funds. So, I know one question that that Dan had. Oh, actually, maybe you're bringing it up from the historical society, but he had a, the question whether or not the park board would accept pledges versus actual dollars, and maybe that would be more of a legal question about pledges. Uh, People pledging that. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I thought you were getting at earlier, Tom. You're talking about the vetting, and yeah, it goes to like a. I can pledge all I want, but. <laughs> right. You can pledge all you want, but then when right. it comes down to brass right. tacks, yeah. you know, what do you do? I, I think that's yeah. a. I think that's a discussion a and uh, question for yeah. another. Another, another time, but I. I um, it's something that we should entertain, perhaps. But um, I would like to hear first what the legal ramifications of that are mm -hmm. you know, if somebody pledges versus a straight donation. Sure. Would you like to table this for now then? Yeah. Well, no, I, I think we should 
I'm, I'm still going to entertain this motion, but the oh, yeah. pledges part we can get back to. Right? Okay. Yeah. Um, so, if there is no further uh, discussion right now, entertain a motion to pre-authorize the Batavia Historical Society to sell naming rights for the Batavia Depot Museum Expansion Project. Mm -hmm. So moved. Second. Motion by Gary, second by uh, Dorsey. Uh, please call the roll. Gray. Aye. Dorsey. Aye. Riley. Aye. Callahan, absent. Tillman. Aye. Motion carries. And then Thank you, commissioners and director. Thank you very much. I will take my lead now. Uh, <laughs> and your audience is going with me. You know, <laughs> we have several other ordinances that yeah, we can right, entertain right. you with, well, you know. I see. Okay, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, feel free to feel yeah. free to leave. I do have a question before you before you head out. Would that be contingent on research done for the percentage? Because right now it's uh You mean for the pledges? Oh, well or, for the the sale of Oh. Both? Yes, both. <laughs> okay. Yes. So it's contingent on the research that we're yes. going to be doing. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's how you know. Do you have to do this over again? Mine was on the reverse. All the way back over again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's been on the whole time. <laughs> Just so you know. I thought that pushing it down meant that it was on. No, pushing oh, for it up oh, is on. Yeah. 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 Like, That's oh, okay. Did we get all that? For anybody who couldn't hear, uh, Tom will type up a complete thing. Um, <laughs> 13B, uh, approval of an ordinance number 375. Yes, Jim. Yes. EB. I was about ready to say. Um, these are, uh, this is the culmination of a very, very many years of uh, working with the city and trying to clean up uh, some property issues that we have had down at the Riverwalk as part of pieces of the property that were given uh, at the time we were formed back in the uh, late 60s or the 70s and then subsequent pieces of the properties that were uh, acquired. Um, if you've looked at all the way through to the, uh, the subdivision plat as well as the plat of properties, you can see that there are some tiny pieces of property that we are going to be taking on um, and we're giving up a section of the roadway that leads into River Range that we actually still own but really should be owned by the city as it's a roadway. We don't want to own um, it. Right, mm -hmm. so yeah. weird. And then it also, what it really does, it gives us uh, control of all of the brick part of the river walk no. path. So uh, then it's, it will make it much cleaner and clearer. Um, and all of this wonderful paperwork is uh, all what's as required uh, between two public entities to transfer property back and forth. So it's a lot of where is and where ups. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're getting the language down, Jim. Pardon me? You're getting the language down. Oh, yeah. Where is, where is, where for. So I guess if you if you have any questions about the pieces or what they're looking like or where they are, we I can sure. So that. That's good. there are three things on the agenda. Are they all related to yes. the same and yes. they have to have a separate approval? Right. But Each the bottom line is, is we're transferring mm -hmm some of the property around the peg bond center uh is being transferred to us Correct. and out of that we're transferring back little parcels and slivers and so forth that we never really should that have had important. anyway correct yeah right. and the and the city is or has at when i'm not sure when their city council meeting is it's somewhere yeah. It's tonight yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. tonight yeah yeah they're doing the same thing okay and they're doing the same they're sort of doing mirror image three-step process. Okay. okay. It's just like this. It's just sort of the opposite transfers because... Right. You know, the, so we're in tandem. So with that, entertain a motion to approve ordinance number 375 requesting the transfer of certain parcels of real estate from the city of Batavia pursuant to the Local Government Property Transfer Act as presented. So moved. Second. Motion by Gray, second by Dorsey. Please call the roll. Gray. Aye. Dorsey? Aye. Riley? Aye. Callahan absent. Tillman? Aye. Motion carries. So I'm, I'm not going to entertain any more discussions since they're all the same. I'm just going to keep going, rolling right through Beautiful. it. So, Thank you. Um, I have to find it, though, because it's all written out so nicely. 
uh, 13B. Now we're on 13C. C. Yep. Oh, 13C. Thank you. Uh, entertain a motion to approve the agreement for transfer of property from the Batavia Park District to the City of Batavia as presented. So moved. Second. Motion by Gray, second by Dorsey. Please call the roll. Gray. Aye. Dorsey. Aye. Riley. Aye. Callahan absent. Tillman. Aye. Motion carries. And the last one um, is 13D. Um, entertain a motion to approve resolution number 246 authorizing the transfer of property from the Batavia Park District to the City of Batavia as presented. So moved. Second. Oh. Maybe I've been oh, really fast. Oh, motion by Riley, <laughs> second by Dorsey. Please call the roll. <laughs> Just I'm shaking. <laughs> this, this is the most important transfer. Right. Okay. <laughs> Riley. <laughs> Riley. Aye. Dorsey. Aye. Gray. Aye. Callahan absent. Tillman. Aye. Motion carries. All right. That's all three. I, I told Allison uh, that we sat in a meeting. Uh, former director Clark and I and uh, Dirk Price on the morning of 9-11. Uh, oh, this was one of the items mm. on, our, on our list. That's so how long they've been talking about. Oh, wow. Talking about a girl like that. Wow. So, yeah. Finally, so, if you have completion much. on it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, Shoki will be proud. That's a lot of weird. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, item number 13E, appointment of board officers. Um, <clears throat> So, I always forget how this works. Um, open the floor to appointments, take appointments, close appointments, set floors, set ballot accordingly, blah, blah, blah. So this is basically just asking folks who they would like. Now, I, I sent an email uh, a little while ago with my choices. Um, and Tara I, did too. Tara said she wanted the, the same. And yeah, the so parents they, also said that. So the same. And so... I don't know, you guys get a copy of that? I, I did, yours. and I have everything being exactly the same, except for the sub for that. Yeah, I didn't have any subs. That's yeah. the, the, the subs for, for the Fox, Fox Valley, Valley and mm -hmm. for the Batavia Chamber. Kevin, did you have any changes? Or? No, no, not really. Not okay, really. not really, but <laughs> that implies maybe. Um, <laughs> no. Okay, all right. The same. Okay, um, so... We would need some t to take appointments for the subs, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So for if you want a sub for the Parks Foundation, if Tom can't make a meeting, you could have a uh, Well, an there's alternate. not a sub on here. I was talking about the Fox Valley oh, Board okay. of Directors and for the Batavia Chamber. True. Oh, we need a sub for that? I thought I was the sub for that. You know, that's you. For what? Oh, I'm Parks Foundation. I don't have that. I'm the liaison. I don't have that. I might. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, then I am voting Tara Gray to be my sub okay. for the Parks Foundation. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Um, we need subs for the Fox Valley Special Rec Board of Directors, right? Mm-hmm. I thought I thought you were Allison. I thought you were. No, she's the appointment. I'm the board member. Oh. Or the nominee, nominee right now. Right. But does it have to be staff? Um, preferably. Dean last time. Right. Yeah. right. yeah, it does make sense for the recreation director um, because of the, the nature of working with inclusion aides so. and <laughs> the inclusion coordinator. So I have to spell his last name. It's clear. I'll just say Steve. How about that? <laughs> Steve dash new guy. <laughs> Um, and for the chamber, do we need a sub on that? Uh, for chamber, I would recommend uh, our director of marketing because with all of her <laughs> sponsorship, she's always working with businesses. Her uh, eyes say, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> her eyes say, what do I say now? <laughs> yeah, we've never had a, a sub before, and so uh, for yeah, that role. Go for it, Katie. So we'll put Katie in. Okay. <laughs> and I can actually spell out her last name. <laughs> Okay, so we have a slate here. So I'm going to entertain a motion to approve the fiscal year 2018-19 board officer and appointment election results as presented. So moved. Second. Uh, could, could, uh, could I make a suggestion? Yes. Because it's, 
Rotova, I think it would be a good idea to read them. Oh, sure. We could read them off. So uh, the appointment uh, election for president is Pat Callahan. Vice president is myself, John Tillman. Treasurer is Kevin Riley. Secretary is Tara Gray. Uh, executive director, Allison. Law firm, Ansel Glink. Parks found, uh, Batavia Parks Foundation liaison is uh, Tom Dorsey and Tara Gray. Uh, Fox Valley Special Rex Board of Directors is Allison and Steve. And the Chamber of Commerce is Allison and Katie. We good? Great. Thank Perfect. You. Does that entertain a motion still stand? Yes. Right? Okay. So there was a motion, entertain of a motion placed on the table. So moved. Second. Motion by Dorsey, second by Gray. Please call the roll. Dorsey? Aye. Gray? Aye. Riley? Aye. Callahan absent. Tillman? Aye. Motion carries. Now, we were covering item 13E. Does that also, does that vote also include 13F as the actual election, or do we just do the appointment of board officers and now we have to entertain a motion for the, I mean, how does that work? You just, you just we just did. Right. Yeah. Okay. Just I just want to make sure because there's two items on the agenda. I just want to make sure that we cover them both. Yep. So we covered 13 E and F, and G and H. <laughs> and and, uh, I. and I. <laughs> You're kicking butt, John. Yeah. Wow. You're really, efficient. Right. See how I I had planned all that. Right. Time to up. Right. So we are now on item 14, Fox Valley Special Rec Association update. Yes, uh, included in your packet are the minutes uh, from the last approved, uh, or from the board meeting with the last approved minutes. Um, sadly, uh, the Fox Valley Special Recreation Association's foundation manager, Jamie Sp Spiva, S-P-I-V-A, is no longer with the association. So they are in transition and they're currently looking for a new foundation Manager. Was she the newer person that was really kind of going? Okay. Yep, she did a great job of raising money, but she is now gone and they are now hiring. Okay. okay. Well, thank you. Um, any questions on that? On the write up? Okay. Um, item number 15 Batavia Parks Foundation update. Um, there hasn't really been an update from the last time that we did this mostly because they meet every other month mm -hmm. but I would like to let everybody know that June 3rd Bulldogs Unleashed kickoff is happening um, you can find it on the Batavia Parks Foundation website uh, 10th it's the 10th, 10th. Yep. oh did they change it yeah, they're combining the with the flag day sir oh, mm -hmm. oh okay and the, mm -hmm. and the wishes on the pond the tributes and wishes oh. on the pond. Well, I guess I'm the liaison, so I should have known. <laughs> and you thought you were the sub. <laughs> so, do we go back now to the sheet that we just did? I'll do the sub. <laughs> Is there anything else? No, that okay. was it. All right. <laughs> Can barely get that right. <laughs> That uh, takes us to uh, executive session for land, land acquisition 2C5. So um, I entertain a motion to go into executive session to discuss land acquisition 2C5. So moved. <laughs> second. Motion by Gray, second by Dorothy. Is this, this is a roll call or? This is, yeah, please call the roll. Gray. Aye. Dorsey. Aye. Riley. Aye. Callahan absent, mm -hmm. Tillman. All right, motion carries. Uh, and we uh, do not plan on uh, taking any further action after executive session, so um, I would say good uh, night to everybody, and we'll see you next month.